Singapore launched a task force last Wednesday in a bid to attract more young professionals into the built environment sector. But what exactly are the challenges they face on the ground and how will the task force help to address them? Now, to help shed some light on this, I'm now joined by Melvin Tan, president of the Singapore Institute of Architects and Chuck Ko, president of the Association of Consulting Engineers Singapore. A warm welcome to the program, Chuck, Melvin. Now, my first question is for the both of you. Uh, tell us how the task force meet the challenges of getting people, especially the young ones, to join your respective industries. Chuck, perhaps we can start with you. First, let's talk about the challenges. Mm. Uh, first is actually the perception. We are, we are in the business of the building the fiscal world. Uh, developing the fiscal world. Sure. But when the public goes around, what do they see? They see construction sites. They see roadworks. They see road diversions, laying of cables, laying of pipes. Yeah. So in their perception, it is just construction. So it's dirty, it's perhaps manual, it is heavy equipment, even hazardous or unsafe. So this is the kind of misconception of our business. Actually, what we do is a lot more than that. So that's mm -hmm. one. The other thing uh, which is happening now is actually the salaries. The starting salaries of engineers and architects are actually lower compared to uh, the competing industries around our business. So they, they draw away our talents. Mm. So this is the other uh, challenge. There are other challenges. So the task force will be uh, looking at addressing these challenges and how we can then come up with actions and strategies to uh, tackle them. Melvin, what about you? You're part of this task force. How will it uh, address some of these challenges that Chuck has mentioned? So there are a lot of efforts going into this and it's multi-pronged. Mm. It's not any one particular strategy that will solve the entire problem. So uh, the task force is looking at a variety of of issues and strategies. Number one, how do we brand the built environment? Now the built environment sector is rather exciting. Uh, we spoke about the Terminal 5 happening and that's an exciting project that every person on the street goes go through when we travel mm. and so with buildings like that um, there is a need to understand what we do how we do it the creativity and the passion that goes into creating iconic buildings like that in Singapore. But I want to touch on the concerns again, like Chuck has mentioned, low pay. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the reports that we've seen, we talk about high stressful environment, we talk about long working hours. Are these concerns valid? I mean, how did they arise in the first place? To a certain extent, um, the industry can be seen over the last maybe two to three decades, um, starting to compete on fees as opposed to competing on competencies and value. Now, if we can turn that tables around and as we start to focus on value and competencies, I believe that the industry will be able to deal with some of these problems that we're, we're sorting out, right? We're dealing with. Mm. Um, so the task force is looking at that as a whole, um, not just branding, um, the difficulties we're facing. Now, the other thing that we're perhaps Perhaps it's lacking is that firms have been, because we've been competing on fees and on costs, we've not been able to invest back into our staff, into the very people who create and do these works. Okay. So I think that's one important part that we want to focus on, which is HR investment mm -hmm. and how we build competencies within the staff. Okay, when it comes to the hours, Chuck, uh, flexible work arrangements, that have become a mainstay of a post-COVID economy. But how much of a limiting factor is this when it comes to uh, attracting people to join your industry? Well, I, I, I'm quite sure the flexible arrangement, we are embracing it fully. Uh, it's never an issue. Uh, mm. and all the consultants and um, uh, professionals' bodies are doing that. Even the government employers are doing that. But in our business, it has to be balanced. Uh, we have to look at both. We, we do need fiscal time together. Mm. We also can do virtual. Right? It, we, we need that um, flexibility. And sometimes the fiscal interaction is important to us to do creative work, to collaboration. The fiscal togetherness is actually also quite important now in our work. So, but we embrace uh, flexible work arrangement, no, no issue. Okay, that's good news uh, for some people, perhaps. Melvin, you know, uh, in, in trying to boost this sector's appeal, you're hoping to push for fairer remuneration uh, given the demanding work environment, which you said will lead people to losing interest 
in their jobs. But how far can remuneration go as a solution? I think remuneration will go a long way. It's important. It's one very important part, but there are other areas that are important. So remuneration will be able to at least um, put us on the same playing field with other sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, but besides that, we're also looking at how to improve the esteem of the profession, how architects and engineers value the work that we do ourselves, as well as with our developers and our other stakeholders. And by doing that, I think we will be able to contribute. Now, I think we need to talk about value and the value proposition that consultants bring to a project. Okay. Um, many a times we're looking at consultants as a service provider. We disagree. I think consultants bring value to a project. Mm. And by bringing that value to the project, whether it's by designing it better, designing it more sustainable, designing it in a far more efficient way, that brings a huge amount of value. So we see ourselves as value creators to the, to the market or the built environment as opposed to being a service provider. Okay, and this would be my final question. You know, even within the engineering and construction sector, Chuck, th there is a wide variety of roles, expectations and challenges. Are there parts of the sectors that are struggling more than others? And how will solutions need to be tailored to them individually? Okay, um, there are different stakeholders. Uh, we do have similar issues. We also have different issues. So obviously, uh, the task force has to look at uh, issues that is common. We also have to look at issues that are specific. And solution definitely has to be tailored to specific issues. It cannot be one solution or one way to solve everything, right? So mm. it, it will be going down to that kind of a specific tailored uh, solutioning for respective issues. All right, Chuck, Melvin, we appreciate you coming to the studio tonight uh, to break it all down for us on the engineering and construction sector. Thank you so much. That was Chuck Co, president of the Association of Consulting Engineers Singapore, as well as uh, Melvin Tan, president of the Singapore Institute of Architects.